Let us prepare for our morning worship. Good morning, Central. If you are able to stand, will you please stand at this time? The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth remain tallowed. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. At this time, we ask that the Reverend Freddie Smith would come and lead us in our morning prayer. After our morning prayer, we will have our choral response. After the choral response, we will be led in the praise and worship by our music ministry on this day. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with yet another day that we can open our eyes and see that we are in the land of the living. Lord, we thank you for all the things, all the resources, everything that you have given us to make this life meaningful. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for your daughter and son, our Lord and Savior, King Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for blessing our paths all the week, Lord, you've been with us. Now, Lord, we come to your temple to give you our best praise. Because, Lord, you gave us your best a long, long time ago. Help us, Lord, to not only to, to receive this precious gift, but to use it, Lord, to glorify you. Help us, Lord, to live out our lives, telling someone how we came out of darkness into the marvelous land. Help us, Lord, as we come and worship you with excellency of praise to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Help us, Lord, to let our light shine among our brothers and sisters that we may with one plus voice blend in harmony and in unison to the Lord of lords. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for coming into 2021. But Lord, help us to get our purposes together so that we might, with, effect, with effectiveness, bless your name. Somebody's waiting. Somebody needs healing. Somebody needs something. Lord, equip us to go out and do your bidding. Bless your name. Bless our, bless our services today, Lord. Especially, Lord, touch and anoint our pastor. Give him exactly what he needs to get the message out to the people so that we can take it out to the highways and hedges and tell someone about a man named Jesus who saved us out of our sin, blessed us to be among the living. Lord, bless the White House all the way down to our house. You know what's going on and you've got the cue. So help us to continue looking to the hills coming all our help, knowing that all our help comes from thee. Thank you, Lord. This is your servant's prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Reverend Freddie Smith for leading us in the spirit 
and the strength of our morning's prayer.
You're done for me just because you're worthy. You've been so good to me, Lord, and I just can't thank you enough. One Lord, yeah, one faith. We come to praise you, Lord. Clapping our hands, clapping our hands, clapping our hands. Clapping a hand, clapping a hand, clapping a hand, clapping a hand, clapping a hand. Clapping a hand. I tell you that we come to praise you, Lord. I tell you that we come, yeah, to praise you, Lord. I tell you that we come, Lord, to praise you, Jesus. I tell you that we come. To praise you, Lord, for you've been so good, for you've been so kind, you've been so good, you've been so kind, you brought us from a mighty long way, yes you did, Lord, yes you did, Jesus, yes you did, God, you saved my soul from a burning hell, Lord, you delivered me, Jesus, you set my soul free. I thank you, Lord. I praise you. I worship you, Lord. I adore you, Jesus. I exalt you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We come to praise the Lord. Has it been good to you? 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 You ought to praise him. You ought to lift him up. You ought to worship him. We come to praise you. 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 Oh my God. He did it for me. making preparation on Friday and Saturday and getting ready to come to church on Sunday morning, get up, shower, drive, and come here. If you're going to come to church, you might as well have church. <laughs> we thank God for our praise and worship ministry. We are always and we are continually looking for ways to try to make worship as safe as we possibly can for you. Our praise team have been coming out on the first Thursday and having practices on Thursdays. I met with Anthony and I 
counsel the practices coming out. They're doing Zoom practices now. As less as you have to come together physically to meet, the greater chance you have of minimizing the effect of the virus. And when you can stay in your own home and don't have to drive and don't have to come out here during the course of the week, then the church is clean and fresh, ready for service again on Sunday morning. Amen. I, I think they sound pretty good for a Zoom practice, don't you? <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much, choir. Thank you so much. Let us look now at our upcoming events, our upcoming events for our church family. Let me remind you the prayer power hour will begin again on this Wednesday from 12 o'clock noon until 12 15. We enjoy the time that we share with our people and those who join our broadcast. So come out and, 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 and tune in and send your prayer requests in because let me tell you, prayer still works. There were time that we ought to be praying, just look at what happened this past week in Washington, D.C. It's, it's praying time, y'all. Amen. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on that today because it was so crazy. I don't want to give it any credit and any more time to it than it deserves. Whatever is in people's hearts will eventually come out. And our lawyer should never should so be so great to a man that we follow anything somebody tell us to do. Amen, somebody? Yeah. Lies were lost, people were injured, property were destroyed. We're in a democratic process. You have an election, people vote on you. If you don't win, it's time to move on. That's the simple process. It's always been like that on the West, such a change now. The electoral college is certified the votes, everything was in order. And when your time is up, your time is up. Amen. But if you provided divisive leadership for four years while you were in there, you still providing divisive leadership when time for you to leave. Right. It's time for a change, y'all. Amen. So come join us on our prayer power hour request that we have with our upcoming events. We also remind you to continue, my brothers and sisters, to join our Sunday school for our Sunday school broadcast each Sunday after our worship services, our Sunday school meets, and they're teaching a the lesson, they're having enjoyment of it. Please join and tune in for that. The numbers are on the screen for you in order to do so. And let me personally thank each and every one of you for the way you've supported this ministry. Let me thank those who are not even members of our church who are sub submitting financial contribution to our church every Sunday through our online broadcast. We have people from Washington, D.C., from Buffalo, New York, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, from Fort Valley, Georgia, and many other places who have contributed to the ministry each and every Sunday. So if we are faithful to what God has charged upon us, God will touch the heart of people, and they will be a blessing to the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. So thank you for your faithfulness. As we prepare to give, let's look at what the Word of God said in Malachi, the third chapter. Beginning with verse 8, very familiar passage, asks the question, will a man rob God? Some translation posed it this way, will anyone rob God, male or female? Yet we say, yet we have robbed thee. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? We robbed thee in tithes and offerings. Stay there a minute. You, it didn't describe this as burglary, but it was described this as robbery. You know why burglary normally takes place at night? <laughs> robbery takes place during the day. And most of the time in robbery, you know your victim. Good Lord have mercy. So 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is daytime robbery. Y'all don't hear me. Yeah. 
we have all the not only in tithe, but in offering as well. Continue, look what the word of God say. When you do that, you are cursed with a curse. In other words, when you rob God and don't properly give your tithes and offering, I don't care how much money you make, it ain't gonna never be enough. Hmm? That little tap that you hear from the car where we normally will put this stuff in the radio and stuff becomes a blown engine because if you are not faithful over here, you're going to give your money somewhere over here. So I've learned that I don't want to live my life on the curse. For you are cursed with a curse. Look what the word of God says, even this whole nation. But I like what the word of God says, if you bring all the tithes into the storehouse, in other words, the Lord is saying, if you take care of my house, I'll take care of your house. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. There may be meat in my house and prove me. The Lord said, test me. Now here with said the Lord is so If I will not open you up the windows, and why he said windows? Because windows are plural. And every house that I know, there are more windows than doors. Huh? I would open up the windows of heaven, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull you out a blessing. The young folks call it a crazy blessing, a stupid blessing, a don't make sense blessing, a blessing that there would not be room enough to receive. In other words, I'm going to give you so much, it won't pour out so much, it won't be room enough for you to receive it. All your haters got to back up off of your enemies got to be at bay, because I'm going to give you a blessing. That is not room enough to receive it. But I like this 11 verse. Sometimes we don't look at the 11 verse. Say, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. In other words, whatever stands in the way of you bringing your tithes and offering into the storehouse, I rebuke it for your sake. And it went on to say, not only will I rebuke it for your sake, but the Lord is going to take the word lack out of your vocabulary. vocabulary. You don't lack anything when you faithfully bring your tithes and offering because we serve a God who's a God of increase. And I, I declare and I decree increase in your life today. If you are faithful with your tithes and your offering, get ready for the blessing that God is getting ready to pour out for your own. If you are faithful, watch what God is getting ready to do. If you are faithful, your circumstance is going to change. Your situation is going to change. Your finances are going to change because he gonna pour out you a blessing that you don't have room enough in order to receive it. Try God, trust God, and watch and see what God will do. Let us stand. God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to bring your tithes and our offering into the storehouse. We thank you for your word has shared with us that if we're faithful unto a few things, that you will make us ruler over many things. We thank you for those faithful tithers at this church who just trust you at your word. We're thankful for those who may not be tithing, but they're growing in the grace of giving. And we thank you for those who are just stubborn enough that they just don't trust you. But God bless them anyhow. Touch their hearts anyhow. Remind them of a ministry that doesn't cost anything, normally doesn't produce anything. Remind them that when they sow, they will reap. When the harvest time comes, we want to have sown in good soil so we can reap what the Lord has in store for you. Thank you for this opportunity to allow us to worship you through giving. In the precious name of Jesus of Christ, we pray. Thank God and amen. Please turn and face each other and follow the direction of our ushers. Yes, yes. My Lord, my Lord. You can't be God given. Yeah, love. So, Scott, how you doing? All right. 
Let us stand together as we look at our scripture reading for the day from the gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter, verse 13 through 17, the gospel according to Matthew. Amen. You'll find the following words that are recorded in your Bible and they're on the screen for you as well. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye? I know what the other folks say. But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, now this is old cussing, Peter. This, this Peter who visited down in Augusta with Jane Bryan said, I don't know karate, but I do know karate. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. 
And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen.
Barbara, thank you, choir, for that selection. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 16, verses 14 and 15. And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But he said unto them, But whom do you say that I am? I just want to tag this from the sermonic thought. Do you know him for yourself? Huh? Do you know him for yourself? My brothers and my sisters, as a young boy growing up on 209 Chestnut Street, Fort Valley, Georgia, to the parents of John and Lucius, Robertson Ezel, I was introduced to Christ at a very early age. Attending the Usher's Temple CME Church upon the leadership of Dr. E.L. Green, I was preached to and taught about Jesus during my embryonic years of development. While attending the Usher Temple CME Church, my Sunday school teacher was named Sister Ruby Burton. She taught the word of God every Sunday. What I loved about Sister Burton, Deaconess Gail Johnson Montgomery, was that no matter what time Sunday school started at 10, she was always there. If nobody else was in the room, Sister Burton was in the room. She was prepared every Sunday. There were times as young folks, we would hang out a little bit in the classroom hoping that Miss Burton would be gone by the time we would report to the Sunday school room. But I reported some days by myself and she was still waiting. She taught me about the word of God. So my brothers and sisters, yes, I was preached to, I was taught to, but I had to develop a personal relationship with him for myself. And the question is today is that, do you know him for yourself? We reside in a time, my brothers and sisters, where everybody's in the name dropping. We love to drop names of people we know uh, but we really do not have a personal relationship with them. We want to rub shoulder with the movers and shakers around us. And I've learned in my lifetime that most folks don't can't move nothing and can't shake nothing. Well, I wish I had a little help in here today. Remember, it's always important to remember who you are and whose you are. It is really hard to know who you are if you do not know the one who knows all about you. It's really hard to know who you are when you don't know the one who, who knows you so well that he knows the number of hairs on your head. We have folks changing business cards, trying to be important, and they never go by to think they're big ballers, high shot callers, but you must know the man and you must know him for yourself. Let us examine our text. Let's I hold you long this morning. Jesus and his disciples are in the coast of Caesarea Philippi. This was a predominantly Gentile area located some 20 miles north of Bethsaida where Jesus had just healed a blind man. In Mark 8, chapter verse 22 through 26, it is here that the spring issues forth from Mount Hermon that forms one of the tributaries that becomes the Jordan River. This was a beautiful area that was steep in pagan religion. 
In ancient times, the city had been called Bellinius because it had been a center of Baal worship. Baal was a Phoenician god of fertility and nature. Later, the name was changed to Paneas because of the Greek belief that their god Pan was born in a cave in the hills above the city at the foot of Mount Hermon. Pan was a half goat, half man god who was believed to be the god of your flocks and nature. In fact, the modern name of this ancient city, Manias, which is a form of Panias. Somebody said, teach this morning. Caesarea Philippi also contained a gleam in the marble temple built by Herod Philip to honor Caesarea, the Roman emperor who was considered to be a god. The citizens of this city were required to enter this temple at least once a year, place a pinch of incense on a burning altar, and proclaim Caesar is Lord. It was there in this city devoted to the worship of idols and man-made gods that Jesus chose as a place to make a fuller revelation of himself to his disciples. It was also here that Simon Peter saw for the first time that Jesus Christ was truly the Son of God. Jesus used this tragic backdrop of paganism and false worship to cause his men to think about the most vital issues of life. That issue is who is Jesus to you? Correctly understanding who Jesus is means the difference between being saved and being lost. It means the difference between heaven as well as hell. Today I want to take a close look at our Savior's question in verse 15. The question is, whom say ye that I am? Your answer to that question determines how you will live your life here, and it will determine where you will go when you die. Well, I wish I had a praying church. It is the single most important question you will ever hear or that you will ever answer. Let's I hold you along. First of all, I want to remind you uh, that you got to know him for yourself. First of all, let's see what is your number one, what is your position? Do you know him for yourself? Do you know who he is and what he is to you? I know that you have read about him, you've heard about him, you've been taught about him, but do you know him for yourself? Do you have a personal intimate relationship with him? I know that you know church politics, Baptist doctrine, articles of faith, bylaws, robber rules of orders and procedures, denomination and association protocol, but my question is, do you know him? And do you know him for yourself? I know that you have your name on the church roll, but do you know him? And is your name recorded in the book of life? I know that you, you, love, you love your family and your friends, but do you love your enemies as well? But if you know him, you can love your family and friends, but you can love your enemies as well. Do I have a witness in here? You do not to have, you do not to have manufactured praise. Uh, you don't have to fake it until you make it. You don't have to make praise up uh, just because somebody tell you to turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor what the Lord has done for you. There are times that I don't want to turn to my neighbor. There's time I don't feel like doing it, but when I think about what the Lord has done for me, I don't need to tell anybody else. I, I know how good the Lord has been. I, I know where the Lord has brought me from. I know how the Lord has brought me out of darkness. Darkness, uh, and to the marvelous light. Uh, see, I don't need uh, anybody else to start a praise party. I can start a praise party all by myself. Uh, do I have a witness in here? All I got to remember is the mess I used to be in and all the trouble I used to call. Uh, see what the Lord has done for me and see what the Lord has brought me out of it. And I just can't hold my peace. Uh, do I have a witness in here? You may come in mad and you don't feel like praising him. I come in with praise on my lips. You know why? Because I didn't have to wake up this morning. If the Lord woke you up and started you on your journey, that's a reason enough to give him praise. So what is my position? My position is I'm going to praise him. If I got to praise him all by myself, my position I know too much about him that you can't make me doubt him. You weren't there. You don't know when and you don't know where. So my position is for God I live and for God I die and somebody ought to testify how good the Lord has been. Do you know him? And do you know him for yourself, Reverend Freddie Smith? That's my position. Second of all, I'm going to do it publicly. 
uh, verse number 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, said, Whom do men say I the Son of Man am? Whom do men say that I am? In other words, he wanted to check his street credibility. Good Lord, how much? What the boys on the corner say? What my homies say? What my roadies say? Do I have any street credibility? During the life of Christ, men had a lot to say about him and whom they thought he was. Verse 14 shows us who some thought Jesus to be. Some thought, first of all, he was John the Baptist, who was a holy man willing to die for his faith. Even King Herod thought that Jesus was John the Baptist raised from the dead. Matthew 3 and 11 said, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Others thought he was Elijah, the greatest of all the Old Testament prophets. The Jews were expecting Elijah to return just before the Messiah came. Malachi 4 and 5. Some believe that Jesus was a forerunner, but not the Messiah. 1 Kings 17 and 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, that should not be in do not reign these years, but according to my word. Others thought he was Jeremiah, a holy prophet, who was expected to return just before the Messiah came. He was supposed to bring with him the tabernacle, the ark of the covenant and the altar of the incense, which he had hidden in Mount Nebo before he died. For I know the plans the text we're reminded of is Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. One of the prophets, a man of God, sent with a messenger for that time, a man in whom dwelt the spirit of one of the great prophets. In other words, uh, Jesus wanted to know from them, who do you say that I am? So my brothers and sisters, first of all, you got to know your position. My position is that uh, I'm, I'm going to praise him because of not who, what he's done for me, because of who God is. Second, I'm going to do it publicly. I'm not going to be a secret agent Christian. Thirdly, I'm going to do it uh, from a personal standpoint. Position, public, and personal. Personal in verse 15. Jesus said, let's get personal now. He said to them, but whom? Do you say that I am? I'm finna press it, y'all. And when he had called upon his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness. Lord, have mercy in all manner of disease. Now the name of the 12 apostles uh, the first is Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Aphia, Lepidus, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas, his carrier, who also betrayed him. As I pressed her to close the twelve Jesus sent for and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentile, and to any city of the Samaritan, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And verse 17, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are thy Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. The question is addressed to all. Uh, Peter answered and said, uh, he knows uh, my brothers and my sisters. Uh, I don't know how you feel, uh, but I'm glad I can personally give the testimony. I know who Jesus is, uh, and I know who Jesus is to me. Uh, do I have a witness in here? I ought to have a prayer in church right about now. That ought to be somebody in here that know him and you know him for yourself. Uh, yes, I'm concerned about the numbers. Uh, yes, I'm concerned about the virus. Uh, 
Yes, I'm concerned about what happened this past week. Uh, but my greater concern is that those who are saved and sanctified and Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized uh, ought to have uh, a personal relationship with Jesus. And you ought to know Jesus for yourself. Uh, to have a witness in him. Because I know him for myself. I can declare that you can't make me doubt him. Uh, I know too much about him. Uh, you don't know when and you don't know where. Uh, but I'm glad that I know him. Uh, 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 that I know him uh, for myself. Uh, do I have a witness in him that your testimony is uh, whether I get unemployment extension or not. Uh, I know somebody that said that they would supply all of my needs uh, according to the riches and glory. And I'm going to praise him because of who he is. Uh, can I close this out? Uh, I feel preaching in here. Can I close this out right now? Well, there was a woman uh, in the book of John, the fourth chapter, that met Jesus at the well. Uh, she had an experience with Jesus. And when she met him at the well, uh, her life was changed. Uh, and then the woman started running into the city and said, come uh, and see a man uh, which told me all things uh, I ever did. Uh, is this not the Christ? Uh, I'm so glad this morning that I know that man. Uh, and I know that man for myself. Uh, do I have a witness in him? They tell me, uh, they tell me, uh, and I heard uh, that the woman ran into the city. Uh, where did the woman run when she ran into the city? Well, it said the woman ran uh, to the florist shop uh, and told the florist, uh, you can close up shop. Uh, I know a man uh, who's the rose of Sherry uh, and the lily of the valley. Do I have a witness in him? They said a woman ran to the water department. Said disconnect my water if you want to. But I know a man that, that's water in dry places. Well, I wish I had uh, a praying church in here where they ran to the mortgage company and told him you can evict me out my house if you want to. But I know a man said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house uh, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. They said a woman ran. I said she ran. Uh, good God Almighty, I said she ran into the city and went by the funeral home and told the Martisha, you can put up your embalming fluid for I know a man that said I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I don't know how you feel, but I'm glad I know the man. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that know the man for yourself? I heard, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard when you're in trouble that the man is a mighty good lawyer. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard when you seek. The man is a mighty good healer. Is there anybody here at 3625 that know the man for yourself? I want to ask you one question. Do you, do you, do you know the man for yourself? Let me hear you say, yes, I know the man. 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 Yes, I know Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus for myself. 
if you know him put your hands together and give him praise in this building come on choir yes I know it come on check yes I know say it say it come on yeah yeah come on yes I know yes I know say it open your mouth Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Well, well, well. Woke me up. Yeah. send the invitation to Christian discipleship as the choir continue to sing that may be someone up on the side of my voice in person worshiping today want to step out from where you are give the pastor your hand but give God your heart you may come by letter by your Christian experience our candidate for baptism we serve a whosoever will God whosoever will let them come as this young lady is coming down now, let's put our hands together and give God praise for her. She makes her way down the aisle. Praise God much for her. Amen, amen. There may be someone else who want to press their way down. Don't let the pandemic stop you from uniting with the body of Christ. Amen, somebody. It's good to know him. And it's good to know him for yourself. That's why he posed the question to the disciples, those who have been with him, who witnessed the many miracles that he had done. I know what other folks have said about me, but whom do you say I am? Do you know me? Whom do you say I am? Do you have personal knowledge of me? What is your position? Don't tell me about somebody else. What is your position? And are you willing to acknowledge me publicly? And then do you have a personal testimony about our relationship together? So in the midst of everything that's going on around us, make sure you know him. And you know him for yourself. Yes, the numbers are high. They're record-breaking. Over 5,000 cases that are there. Record-breaking. But guess what else is happening? People still on the way at mass. 
People still aren't practicing social distancing, right? You, but you got to do what you can do. Make sure you follow protocol. Make sure you do the right thing. And make sure you have a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm concerned, but I know who's able, y'all. So make sure your relationship is right with him. Maybe there's someone watching us through streaming video, through YouTube. Maybe they're watching us on Facebook. If you desire to be a part of our church family, call our church office, 803 252 Someone will speak with you. If you're not able to get someone, we'll leave a message. We'll make sure we get right with you. If you want to be a part of our church family, just because you can't physically be here, you can still, you're not with us. Right. Amen. Amen, somebody. And we would love to have you a part of our church family. As we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer, remember the Dickerson family, the pastor of one of our Sanch makes you out of the church, Sister Ruby Drea Dickinson. We had services past week. We remember that family in much prayer. Keep them in prayer. Three children who are members of the church, other grands and other family members who are also members of our church. Remember Kathy. Remember Teresa. Remember Leroy. Remember their families as well and other family members connected to the Dickinson family. We lift them in prayer. We lift up Deacon Perry McLaughlin, his wife Deacon S. Murdy McLaughlin and their family. I was with them on Saturday for the homegoing celebration of Deacon Perry McLaughlin, Brother Anthony. So continue to lift that family in much prayer. Many families around us, we're seeing now where families are contacting the virus, four, five, six, seven, eight members of the family all at the same time. I was listening to the radio company that was saying that they're having their order in many places, extra refrigerated trucks and store bodies because funeral homes and malls don't have enough rooms to store the bodies. People who are sick with other diseases aren't able to get into hospitals now because after all the wounds are taken up by COVID patients. We're in some challenging times, y'all. Oh, yeah. And in the midst of all of this, you got to know him. You got to know him. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for this moment and we thank you for this hour. We thank you for being who you are and allowing us to privilege to be called your children. We know that in you we move and have our very being. For with you all things are possible. And without you, we can do nothing. God, we come now looking toward the hills from which cometh our help. Acknowledging all of our help cometh from thee. We come crying out of the wilderness declaring in times like these we need a savior. In times like these we need to be sure and very sure that our anchor grips and holds the solid rock. That rock is Jesus, for he's the one. Because thou art the one we've learned how to lean and depend on you. Because thou art the one we declare that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Because thou art the one you will meet us at our point of need and you will supply us with all that we need. We pray for those family members who have transitioned, those friends, those colleagues, those loved ones. Every day we get a different report and it seems like it's getting closer and closer to home. Many times the reports have been about somebody else that we know, but it's starting to hit our very own families right now. So God, we come now casting all our cares upon you because we carry it much for you right now. There may be someone up on the sound of my voice that's waiting on the result of a test that they've taken right now. God, remind them to cast their cares upon you. Remind them that, God, you're still able to do exceedingly abundant above all we ask to think, according to the power that work within us. Now, God, wrap your loving arms around us. Keep us in your divine and providential care. And if you do so, we'll be mindful to give your name all the praise and the glory. For you are truly worthy to be praised. 
precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank God and amen. 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 You may be seated. Sister Deborah Folk. This morning, little Miss Kenya Williams Fanning. She desires membership here at Central Baptist Church, and she also desires to be baptized. Church, say amen. amen. Janet, prepared y'all. Thank y'all so much for bringing her every Sunday, for working with her and getting her involved in church. Amen. Thank y'all so much. Children mimic what they see from adults. Amen. Amen. You hear that? You might ask a person, Pastor, I can't get my son or my daughter to go to church. What type of conversation about church is going on in your house? If you haven't roasted pastor, baked deacon, leftover trustee conversation in your house, ain't no child gonna wanna go to that church. But if you are lifting the Lord, they see you praising God and supporting your leadership, they can't wait to go where you're going because of what they see is happening in your life, amen? I grew up thinking the church my mom and dad attended was the most perfect church in the world. You know why? I never heard them say anything bad about the church or about the pastor, about the preacher. I never heard them say anything bad about the church. So all I knew was when I grew up, I wanted to be in church because I heard so many good things about church. I'm going to ask you a question. Don't answer out loud. When the last time you said something good about your church or your pastor? Let's stand. <laughs> God is a good God. Laughter is good for your soul. You ought to be able to smile one time. Right? The worst thing to have is a bunch of depressed folks saying they're Christian. Always mad, can't never smile, don't never have no joy, ain't never got nothing good to say about nobody. Like, you a Christian. If you're a Christian, it denotes Christ like. Christ like. Amen. 
After we give the benediction, remain a second. We'll give you orders as far as this message orders is where we're going to depart. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace since now and forever. Amen. As we remain standing, this side over here, exit out this side, though. It all takes you right to the parking lot. Exit out this side, though. This side right over here. Exit out this side, though. It takes you right to the parking lot. It'll take you right to your car. This side over here, right here, Miss McDuffie, y'all exit out that door right there. Y'all exit out that door right there. Rest remain standing where you are. Exit out that door right there. This side right here, when you exit out of that middle door, right, the double doors, go out the double doors right there. We'll let them clear out, then we'll follow. Okay,